Question 1. What are the specific disclosure requirements for selling a property within a designated wildfire zone in California? A. Disclosure of proximity to the nearest fire station. B. No special disclosures required. C. Disclosure of the property's wildfire risk and any measures taken to mitigate it. D. Disclosure of the last wildfire occurrence date. Answer. C. Disclosure of the property's wildfire risk and any measures taken to mitigate it. Explanation. In California, sellers must disclose if a property is located in a designated wildfire zone, including the property's specific risk and any mitigation measures taken. Question 2. How do the California laws regulate dual agency in real estate transactions, and what are the potential conflicts of interest? A. Dual agency is prohibited. B. Dual agency is allowed without any specific disclosures. C. Dual agency is allowed, but both parties must be informed and consent to the arrangement. D. Dual agency applies only to commercial transactions. Answer. C. Dual agency is allowed, but both parties must be informed and consent to the arrangement. Explanation. In California, dual agency is legal, but it requires full disclosure and informed consent from both the buyer and seller due to potential conflicts of interest. Question 3. Describe the legal process for challenging a property tax assessment in California. A. Filing a complaint with the local police department. B. Appealing to the county assessor's office within a specified period. C. Directly petitioning the state governor. D. No legal process available. Answer. B. Appealing to the county assessor's office within a specified period. Explanation. Property owners in California can challenge their property tax assessment by filing an appeal with the county assessor's office within the legally specified time frame. Question 4. In California, what legal steps must a landlord take to evict a tenant for non-payment of rent in a rent-controlled jurisdiction? A. Immediate eviction without notice. B. Providing a written notice followed by a court process if necessary. C. Eviction is not allowed for non-payment of rent. D. Only a verbal warning is required. Answer. B. Providing a written notice followed by a court process if necessary. Explanation. In California, landlords must provide a written notice to tenants for non-payment of rent and may need to undergo a court process for eviction, especially in rent-controlled areas. Question 5. Explain the implications of selling a property with a solar panel lease agreement in California. A. The lease agreement is terminated upon sale. B. The new owner must renegotiate the lease terms. C. The existing lease agreement typically transfers to the new owner. D. Solar panel leases have no implications on property sales. Answer. C. The existing lease agreement typically transfers to the new owner. Explanation. In California, when a property with a solar panel lease is sold, the lease agreement usually transfers to the new owner, who must then adhere to its terms. Question 6. Discuss the legal ramifications of non-compliance with California's seismic retrofitting requirements for older buildings. A. Potential fines and mandatory compliance orders. B. No legal ramifications. C. Immediate building closure. D. Tax incentives. Answer. A. Potential fines and mandatory compliance orders. Explanation. Owners of older buildings in California that don't comply with seismic retrofitting requirements may face legal consequences such as fines and orders to comply. Question 7. How does the California Coastal Act impact development rights for properties located along the coastline? A. Unrestricted development rights. B. The Act does not impact coastal properties. C. Development is typically restricted to preserve coastal resources. D. Mandatory development of coastal properties. Answer. C. 
development is typically restricted to preserve coastal resources. Explanation The California Coastal Act imposes restrictions on development along the coastline to protect coastal resources and access. Question 8. What are the responsibilities of a real estate agent in California when handling a property with known environmental hazards? A. No special responsibilities. B. Fully disclose all known environmental hazards to potential buyers. C. Advise the seller to remedy the hazards before selling. D. Only disclose if asked by the buyer. Answer. B. Fully disclose all known environmental hazards to potential buyers. Explanation. In California, real estate agents are required to fully disclose any known environmental hazards of a property to potential buyers. Question 9. Describe the process and requirements for converting a single-family residence into a multi-family dwelling in California. A. No special process or requirements. B. Obtain necessary permits, adhere to zoning laws, and possibly make structural changes. C. Only a verbal agreement with the local housing authority is needed. D. Conversion is not allowed. Answer. B. Obtain necessary permits, adhere to zoning laws, and possibly make structural changes. Explanation. Converting a single-family residence to a multi-family dwelling in California involves obtaining relevant permits, complying with zoning laws, and making any necessary structural modifications. Question 10. Explain the significance of Malarus in California real estate and its impact on property taxation. A. Malarus provides a tax exemption for property owners. B. It refers to additional taxes for specific local improvements or services. C. No impact on property taxation. D. Malarus reduces property taxes for all homeowners. Answer. B. It refers to additional taxes for specific local improvements or services. Explanation. Mellow Ruse in California real estate refers to special districts that can levy additional taxes on property owners to fund specific local improvements or services. Question 11. In California, what are the considerations and challenges in dealing with a property that is part of a homeowners association, HOA? A. There are no special considerations or challenges. B. Adherence to HOA rules, potential fees, and understanding the impact on property use. C. HOAs only apply to commercial properties. D. Automatic exemption from property taxes. Answer. B. Adherence to HOA rules, potential fees, and understanding the impact on property use. Explanation. Owning a property in a homeowner's association in California involves adhering to the HOA's rules and regulations, understanding any associated fees, and considering the impact on property use. Question 12. Discuss the legal considerations for real estate developers in California regarding the Endangered Species Act. A. The act does not apply to real estate development. B. Mandatory relocation of endangered species. C. Compliance with habitat protection requirements and potential need for permits. D. The act only applies to federal lands. Answer. C. Compliance with habitat protection requirements and potential need for permits. Explanation. Real estate developers in California must comply with the Endangered Species Act, which may include habitat protection measures and obtaining necessary permits for development. Question 13. How does a mechanic's lion affect the sale of a property in California, and what steps can be taken to resolve it? A. The lion must be paid or resolved before the property can be sold. B. The buyer assumes responsibility for the lion. C. It has no effect on the property sale. D. The lion is automatically removed upon sale. Answer. A. The lion must be paid or resolved before the property can be sold. Explanation. A mechanic's lion on a property in California must be addressed, either by paying it off or resolving it, before the property can be successfully sold. 
Question 14. What are the implications of the Ellis Act for property owners and tenants in California? A. It allows property owners to evict tenants without cause. B. The Act prohibits eviction for the purpose of converting rentals to condominiums. C. It permits landlords to evict tenants to take the property off the rental market. D. Tenants are guaranteed lifetime occupancy. Answer. C. It permits landlords to evict tenants to take the property off the rental market. Explanation. The Ellis Act in California allows landlords to evict tenants if they intend to remove the property from the rental market, often for conversions or demolitions. Question 15. Explain the process of obtaining a conditional use permit for a property in California. A. Automatic issuance with property purchase. B. Applying through the local planning department, public hearings, and adherence to specific conditions. C. No permits are required for property use. D. A letter of intent to the state government. Answer. B. Applying through the local planning department, public hearings, and adherence to specific conditions. Explanation. Obtaining a conditional use permit in California involves applying through the local planning department, potentially undergoing public hearings, and meeting specific conditions set for the property's use. Question 16. Describe the impact and requirements of California's Green Building Standards Code on new construction projects. A. The code mandates solar panel installation on all new buildings. B. No impact or requirements. C. Compliance with energy efficiency, water conservation, and environmental quality standards. D. Only applies to government buildings. Answer. C. Compliance with energy efficiency, water conservation, and environmental quality standards. Explanation. California's Green Building Standards Code requires new construction projects to adhere to specific standards related to energy efficiency, water conservation, and environmental quality. Question 17. In a California real estate transaction, how is community property handled in a divorce settlement? A. Divided equally between the spouses. B. Awarded entirely to one spouse. C. Converted into a rental property. D. Sold and proceeds donated to charity. Answer. A. Divided equally between the spouses. Explanation. In California, community property, including real estate acquired during marriage, is generally divided equally between the spouses in a divorce settlement. Question 18. What legal issues arise when selling a property located in a California floodplain? A. Mandatory flood insurance and disclosure of flood risk. B. No legal issues or requirements. C. The property cannot be sold. D. Double property tax rates. Answer. A. Mandatory flood insurance and disclosure of flood risk. Explanation. Selling a property in a California floodplain involves disclosing the flood risk to potential buyers and the likely requirement for them to obtain flood insurance. Question 19. Discuss the challenges and legal considerations of historic property preservation in California. A. No challenges. Historic properties are exempt from preservation laws. B. Compliance with preservation guidelines and potential restrictions on alterations. C. Historic properties can be demolished after 50 years. D. Historic designation results in higher property taxes. Answer. B. Compliance with preservation guidelines and potential restrictions on alterations. Explanation. Owners of historic properties in California must comply with preservation guidelines and may face restrictions on making alterations to maintain the property's historic character. Question 20. Explain the legal implications of air rights in urban real estate development in California. A. Air rights are not recognized in California. B. Potential for development above or near the property, subject to zoning and development regulations. C. Unlimited vertical development rights. D. Only applicable to properties near airports. 
Answer. B. Potential for development above or near the property, subject to zoning and development regulations. Explanation. In California, air rights pertain to the potential to develop space above a property, which is subject to local zoning and development regulations. Question 21. A developer in California plans to convert a historical building into a boutique hotel. However, the building is listed as a cultural heritage site. What challenges and legal requirements will the developer face? A. No challenges. Historical status is purely honorary. B. Adhering to strict preservation guidelines and obtaining special permits. C. Automatic denial of conversion requests for historical buildings. D. Paying a cultural heritage tax. Answer. B. Adhering to strict preservation guidelines and obtaining special permits. Explanation. Developers in California converting historical buildings face challenges like adhering to preservation guidelines and obtaining permits that respect the building's cultural heritage status. Question 22. After a severe drought, a property owner in California is informed that their groundwater use must be limited. What are the legal implications of this for the property owner, especially if they rely on this water source for agricultural purposes? A. No legal implications. Water use is unrestricted. B. Requirement to adhere to state-imposed water usage limitations. C. Mandatory installation of water-saving technology. D. Compensation from the state for reduced water usage. Answer. B. Requirement to adhere to state-imposed water usage limitations. Explanation. In drought conditions, California property owners, including those using groundwater for agriculture, may face legal restrictions on water usage to conserve resources. Question 23. A real estate agent in California discovers that a listed property was the site of a major crime a year ago. How should the agent handle this information with potential buyers? A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. B. Only disclose if asked directly by the buyer. C. Keep the information confidential to protect the seller's interests. D. Report the information to the local authorities. Answer. A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. Explanation. In California, significant events like major crimes occurring on a property are material facts that must be disclosed to potential buyers. Question 24. During a property inspection in California, a significant earthquake fault is discovered on the land. What disclosure obligations does the seller have, and how might this affect the property's value and insurability? A. Full disclosure of the earthquake fault and potential impact on value and insurance. B. No obligation to disclose natural hazards. C. Only disclose if the buyer plans to build on the property. D. Disclosure is only required for commercial properties. Answer. A. Full disclosure of the earthquake fault and potential impact on value and insurance. Explanation. Sellers in California must disclose known natural hazards like earthquake faults, which can affect a property's value and insurability. Question 25. A couple is buying a house in California with an unpermitted in-law unit. What are the potential legal and financial risks they face, and how can these be mitigated? A. No risks. Unpermitted units are common. B. Potential fines and the need to bring the unit up to code. C. Automatic eviction of tenants from the unit. D. Requirement to demolish the unpermitted unit. Answer. B. Potential fines and the need to bring the unit up to code. Explanation. Buying a property with an unpermitted unit in California carries risks like potential fines and the need to obtain permits and ensure the unit meets code requirements. Question 26. A California property owner wants to build an extension on their home, but it would encroach onto a public utility easement. What steps should the owner take to legally proceed with their plans? A. Proceed with construction without addressing the easement. B. Seek a modification or release of the easement from the utility company. C. Pay a fee to the local government. D. 
transfer the easement to another part of the property? Answer B. Seek a modification or release of the easement from the utility company. Explanation. In California, building on a public utility easement requires the property owner to negotiate with the utility company for an easement modification or release. Question 27. In a California coastal town, residents are opposing a new housing development project citing environmental concerns. What legal processes must the developer go through to address these concerns and proceed with the project? A. Ignore the residents' concerns and proceed. B. Undergo environmental impact assessments and public hearings. C. Seek approval directly from the state governor. D. Pay compensation to the residents. Answer. B. Undergo environmental impact assessments and public hearings. Explanation. Developers in California must address environmental concerns through processes like environmental impact assessments and possibly public hearings, especially in coastal areas. Question 28. A homeowner in a historic district of San Francisco wants to renovate their home, but their plans are not in compliance with the local historic preservation guidelines. What are their options? A. Proceed with the renovations regardless of guidelines. B. Modify the renovation plans to comply with preservation guidelines. C. Apply for a complete exemption from the guidelines. D. Sell the property as is. Answer. B. Modify the renovation plans to comply with preservation guidelines. Explanation. Homeowners in historic districts in California must ensure that their renovation plans comply with local historic preservation guidelines, potentially requiring plan modifications. Question 29. A real estate investor in California purchases a property at an auction, only to discover there are existing tenants with a long-term lease. What are the investor's rights and responsibilities in this situation? A. Evict the tenants immediately. B. Honor the existing lease terms until expiration. C. Convert the lease into a month-to-month -month agreement. D. Increase the rent to market rates immediately. Answer. B. Honor the existing lease terms until expiration. Explanation. In California, property buyers must honor existing long-term leases until they expire, even if the property was purchased at an auction. Question 30. After buying a home in California, a buyer finds out that their property is part of a landslide zone, which was not disclosed by the seller. What legal recourse does the buyer have? A. No recourse. Landslide risk is a public record. B. Seek damages or resign the sale due to non-disclosure. C. Mandatory arbitration with the seller. D. Report the seller to the local housing authority. Answer. B. Seek damages or resign the sale due to non-disclosure. Explanation. In California, failure to disclose a property's location in a landslide zone can lead to legal recourse for the buyer, such as seeking damages or rescinding the sale. Question 31. A real estate broker in California is accused of misrepresenting the square footage of a property. What consequences might the broker face, and how can buyers protect themselves from such misrepresentations? A. Broker faces no consequences. Buyers should independently verify square footage. B. License revocation and legal action against the broker. Buyers should conduct or review a professional property appraisal. C. A warning from the real estate board. D. Mandatory retraining for the broker. Answer. B. License revocation and legal action against the broker. Buyers should conduct or review a professional property appraisal. Explanation. Misrepresenting property details like square footage can result in serious consequences for a broker in California, including legal action and license revocation. Buyers should protect themselves by verifying property details through appraisals. Question 32. In California, a landowner is interested in subdividing their property to sell in smaller lots. What zoning laws and subdivision regulations must they consider? A. Subdivision is generally prohibited. B. 
local zoning laws, subdivision regulations, and possibly obtaining a subdivision map. C. Only state-level approval is required. D. No regulations. Landowners have full freedom to subdivide. Answer. B. Local zoning laws, subdivision regulations, and possibly obtaining a subdivision map. Explanation. Subdividing property in California requires compliance with local zoning laws and subdivision regulations, which may include obtaining a subdivision map. Question 33. A homeowner in California wants to install a fence, but their neighbor claims it would violate their view easement. How should this dispute be resolved? A. Proceed with the fence installation regardless of the easement. B. Seek a legal resolution or agreement respecting the view easement. C. Remove the neighbor's view easement. D. Request permission from the local government. Answer. B. Seek a legal resolution or agreement respecting the view easement. Explanation. In California, disputes over view easements should be resolved legally or through mutual agreement respecting the rights established by the easement. Question 34. A commercial property in California is found to have asbestos during a renovation. What are the legal obligations of the property owner regarding asbestos abatement? A. Immediate removal of asbestos by the owner. B. No action required as asbestos is considered safe. C. Notify tenants and employees. Professional asbestos removal if necessary. D. Sell the property as is. Answer. C. Notify tenants and employees. Professional asbestos removal if necessary. Explanation. Property owners in California must notify tenants and employees if asbestos is found and undertake professional abatement if required, especially during renovations. Question 35. In a California real estate transaction, what are the considerations and implications of buying a property that is currently leased to a tenant? A. The buyer can terminate the lease immediately. B. The buyer must honor the existing lease until its expiration. C. Convert the lease to a short-term agreement. D. Increase the rent as soon as the property is purchased. Answer. B. The buyer must honor the existing lease until its expiration. Explanation. In California, buyers of leased properties are typically required to honor the existing lease terms until the lease expires. Question 36. How does the California law regarding Proposition 65 affect real estate agents and property disclosures? A. No impact on real estate agents or disclosures. B. Mandatory disclosure of any known exposure to substances listed under Proposition 65. C. Proposition 65 only applies to industrial properties. D. Voluntary disclosure recommended but not required. Answer. B. Mandatory disclosure of any known exposure to substances listed under Proposition 65. Explanation. California's Proposition 65 requires real estate agents to disclose any known exposures to chemicals or substances listed under the act that could cause cancer or reproductive harm. Question 37. A family inherits a beachfront property in California that is subject to a public access easement to the beach. What does this mean for their ownership rights and privacy? A. Full privacy. Public access easements are non-binding. B. They must allow public access through their property to the beach. C. The easement can be revoked by the new owners. D. Permission from the local government is needed for public access. Answer. B. They must allow public access through their property to the beach. Explanation. Inheriting a property in California with a public access easement to the beach means the owners must allow the public to use the easement, impacting their privacy. Question 38. A property in California is being sold with a claim of adverse possession by a neighbor. What legal documentation and processes are involved in resolving this claim? A. The claim can be ignored as invalid. B. Legal action to challenge or validate the adverse possession claim. C. 
automatic transfer of property ownership to the neighbor. D. Mediation between the property owner and the neighbor. Answer. B. Legal action to challenge or validate the adverse possession claim. Explanation. Resolving an adverse possession claim in California typically involves legal action to either validate or challenge the neighbor's claim based on specific legal criteria. Question 39. In California, a property is situated in a high-risk fire zone. What special insurance requirements and building regulations apply to this property? A. Standard insurance and building regulations. B. Enhanced fire insurance coverage and compliance with fire-resistant building codes. C. No insurance available for high-risk fire zones. D. Mandatory relocation of the property. Answer. B. Enhanced fire insurance coverage and compliance with fire-resistant building codes. Explanation. Properties in high-risk fire zones in California often require enhanced fire insurance and must comply with specific building regulations that include fire-resistant materials and design. Question 40. A tenant in California discovers that their rental unit does not have the legally required number of smoke detectors. What actions can they take, and what are the landlord's responsibilities? A. Install the smoke detectors themselves. B. Request immediate installation by the landlord. The landlord is legally obligated to ensure smoke detectors are present and functional. C. Report the landlord to the police. D. No action required. Smoke detectors are optional. Answer. B. Request immediate installation by the landlord. The landlord is legally obligated to ensure smoke detectors are present and functional. Explanation. In California, landlords are legally responsible for installing and maintaining the required number of smoke detectors in rental units. Tenants should request the landlord to fulfill this obligation. Question 41. An apartment complex in California is up for sale, but it's under rent control. What are the implications for a potential investor regarding rent adjustments and tenant rights? A. Rent can be immediately adjusted to market rates. B. Rent adjustments are subject to strict local rent control laws. C. Tenants have no special rights under rent control. D. The property is exempt from rent control upon sale. Answer. B. Rent adjustments are subject to strict local rent control laws. Explanation. In California, properties under rent control are subject to local laws that govern how and when rent can be adjusted, impacting a potential investor's return on investment. Question 42. A property in California is discovered to have significant seismic retrofitting deficiencies. What are the seller's disclosure obligations and the buyer's due diligence in this case? A. The seller is not required to disclose seismic deficiencies. B. Full disclosure by the seller and thorough inspection by the buyer. C. Disclosure only if the buyer inquires about seismic safety. D. The buyer assumes all responsibility for seismic safety. Answer. B. Full disclosure by the seller and thorough inspection by the buyer. Explanation. California law requires sellers to disclose known material facts, including seismic retrofitting deficiencies. Buyers should conduct due diligence with a thorough inspection. Question 43. A real estate agent in California is representing a seller who wants to list a property known to have been a methamphetamine lab. What disclosures are required by law? A. No disclosure is required for past criminal activity. B. Full disclosure of the property's history as a methamphetamine lab. C. Disclosure only upon direct inquiry from the buyer. D. The agent should refuse to list the property. Answer. B. Full disclosure of the property's history as a methamphetamine lab. Explanation. California law requires disclosure of a property's history if it was used as a methamphetamine lab due to potential health hazards. Question 44. During a property transaction in California, a title search reveals an old easement for a now-defunct utility company. 
What should the prospective buyer consider regarding this easement? A. The easement can be ignored as the utility company is defunct. B. Possible legal steps to have the easement officially removed or clarified. C. The easement automatically transfers to the new owner. D. Renegotiate the property price based on the easement. Answer. B. Possible legal steps to have the easement officially removed or clarified. Explanation. In California, even if an easement is for a defunct company, it's important to clarify or legally remove it to avoid future complications. Question 45. A couple is buying a home in California. Just before closing, they discover the property is in a designated flood zone. What implications does this have for their home insurance and mortgage? A. Mandatory purchase of flood insurance may be required by mortgage lenders. B. No implications. Flood zones don't affect insurance or mortgages in California. C. The couple can opt out of flood insurance if they accept the risk. D. The property value is automatically reduced. Answer. A. Mandatory purchase of flood insurance may be required by mortgage lenders. Explanation. Properties in designated flood zones in California typically require owners to purchase flood insurance, especially if they have a mortgage. Question 46. Define lion in the context of real estate and explain its potential impact on a property sale in California. A. A lion is a decorative marking with no legal impact. B. A legal claim or hold on a property, potentially affecting its sale or transfer. C a mandatory insurance policy for all real estate transactions. D. A government tax imposed on luxury properties. Answer. B. A legal claim or hold on a property, potentially affecting its sale or transfer. Explanation. A lien is a legal claim against a property for unpaid debts, which can complicate or impede the sale of the property until the lien is resolved. Question 47. Sarah is selling her house and has received multiple offers. One offer is below the asking price, but is all cash with no contingencies. The other is above asking price, but requires financing and includes an inspection contingency. What factors should Sarah consider when deciding which offer to accept? A. Only the highest offer should be considered. B. The certainty of the all cash offer versus the higher but conditional offer. C. The first offer received, regardless of its terms. D. The financial background of the buyers. Answer. B. The certainty of the all cash offer versus the higher but conditional offer. Explanation. In evaluating offers, sellers like Sarah should consider the certainty and simplicity of an all cash offer against a potentially higher but conditional financed offer. Question 48. Explain the purpose and process of a 1031 exchange in real estate and its potential benefits for California investors. A. A process to exchange properties with similar values to avoid capital gains tax. B. A method to convert residential properties into commercial ones. C. An exchange program between states. D. A tax penalty for frequent property trading. Answer. A. A process to exchange properties with similar values to avoid capital gains tax. Explanation. A 1031 exchange in real estate allows investors to defer capital gains tax by exchanging one investment property for another of similar value. Question 49. A real estate investor is interested in a property, but a title search reveals a cloud on title. What does this mean, and how might it affect the purchase? A. It indicates a clear and unencumbered title. B. Uncertainties or disputes about the property title that can complicate the purchase. C. The property is under government surveillance. D. A temporary issue that can be ignored. Answer. B. Uncertainties or disputes about the property title that can complicate the purchase. Explanation. A cloud on title refers to any dispute or irregularity in the property's title, creating potential legal issues for the buyer and complicating the purchase process. Question 50. 
What are the key differences between a general warranty deed and a quitclaim deed in California real estate transactions? A. No significant differences exist. B. A general warranty deed guarantees a clear title, while a quitclaim deed offers no such guarantees. C. A quitclaim deed is used only for commercial properties. D. A general warranty deed is for leasing properties only. Answer. B. A general warranty deed guarantees a clear title, while a quitclaim deed offers no such guarantees. Explanation. In California, a general warranty deed provides assurance that the property title is free from defects, while a quitclaim deed transfers any ownership interest without any guarantees about the title. Question 51. After purchasing a new home, a buyer discovers that the backyard shed encroaches on the neighbor's property. What are the potential legal remedies for this situation? A. Ignore the encroachment as it involves only a shed. B. Seek a boundary adjustment or easement agreement with the neighbor. C. Demolish the shed immediately. D. Transfer property ownership to the neighbor. Answer. B. Seek a boundary adjustment or easement agreement with the neighbor. Explanation. In California, resolving an encroachment, like a shed on a neighbor's property, may involve legal solutions, such as boundary adjustments or negotiating an easement. Question 52. What are the implications of discovering a prescriptive easement during a property sale in California, and how might it affect the transaction? A. The property cannot be sold until the easement is removed. B. It indicates a right of use established through long-term unauthorized use, potentially affecting property access. C. A prescriptive easement increases the property's value. D. Mandatory compensation to the party holding the easement. Answer. B. It indicates a right of use established through long-term unauthorized use, potentially affecting property access. Explanation. A prescriptive easement in California, gained through long-term use, can affect a property's access rights and should be disclosed in the transaction. Question 53. Tom wants to convert his single-family home into a duplex in California. What zoning considerations and legal permissions must he obtain to proceed? A. No permissions needed. All single-family homes can be converted. B. Check local zoning laws, obtain necessary permits, and possibly rezone the property. C. Only inform the neighbors about the conversion. D. Apply for a state-level conversion permit. Answer. B. Check local zoning laws, obtain necessary permits, and possibly rezone the property. Explanation. Converting a single-family home into a duplex in California requires compliance with local zoning ordinances, obtaining relevant permits, and possibly rezoning. Question 54. In California, how does the concept of community property affect the sale of a property during a divorce? A. The property is automatically sold and proceeds divided equally. B. One spouse is entitled to all proceeds. C. Community property is not considered in divorce settlements. D. The property is divided based on each spouse's contribution. Answer. A. The property is automatically sold and proceeds divided equally. Explanation. In California, Community property, including real estate acquired during marriage, is typically divided equally between the spouses in a divorce, often involving sale and division of proceeds. Question 55. Explain the role of escrow in a real estate transaction in California and why it is important. A. A temporary holding of funds by a third party until transaction conditions are met. B. Escrow is only used for luxury property transactions. C. An optional service for first-time buyers. D. A government tax on property sales. Answer. A. A temporary holding of funds by a third party until transaction conditions are met. Explanation. Escrow in California real estate transactions involves a neutral third party holding funds and documents until all conditions of the transaction are met, 
ensuring a secure and orderly process. Question 56. A property owner in California is facing foreclosure. Describe the foreclosure process and what options the owner might have to avoid it. A. Foreclosure cannot be avoided once initiated. B. The process involves notice of default, a redemption period, and potential sale, with options like loan modification or short sale to avoid it. C. Immediate eviction with no prior notice. D. The owner must pay double the mortgage amount to avoid foreclosure. Answer. B. The process involves notice of default, a redemption period, and potential sale, with options like loan modification or short sale to avoid it. Explanation. In California, foreclosure involves legal steps like a notice of default and redemption period, with options for the owner to avoid it, such as loan modification or arranging a short sale. Question 57. What are the legal implications and responsibilities for a real estate agent in California? when representing both the buyer and seller in the same transaction, dual agency. A. Dual agency is prohibited in California. B. The agent must provide full disclosure to and obtain consent from both parties. C. The agent can favor one party over the other. D. Only written consent from the seller is required. Answer. B. The agent must provide full disclosure to and obtain consent from both parties. Explanation. Dual agency in California is legal, but requires the real estate agent to provide full disclosure about the dual representation and obtain informed consent from both buyer and seller. Question 58. A property in California is listed as having a defeasance clause in its mortgage agreement. Explain what this clause means for the borrower. A. The borrower is penalized for early mortgage repayment. B. The mortgage can be voided upon full payment. C. Mandatory refinancing after five years. D. The clause restricts the sale of the property. Answer. B. The mortgage can be voided upon full payment. Explanation. A defeasance clause in a California mortgage agreement means that the mortgage line is voided once the borrower has fully repaid the loan. Question 59. Linda is considering purchasing a timeshare in California. What are the specific considerations and potential drawbacks she should be aware of? A. Timeshares guarantee a return on investment. B. Considerations include ongoing maintenance fees, inflexibility in scheduling, and potential resale difficulties. C. Timeshares are exempt from property taxes. D. Mandatory participation in timeshare exchange programs. Answer. B. Considerations include ongoing maintenance fees, inflexibility in scheduling, and potential resale difficulties. Explanation. When considering a timeshare purchase in California, buyers should be aware of issues like ongoing maintenance fees, limited scheduling flexibility, and potential challenges in reselling the timeshare. Question 60. A historic property in California is up for sale, but it comes with a preservation easement. What does this mean for potential buyers? A. The property cannot be altered or renovated. B. The easement allows public access to the property. C. Restrictions on alterations to preserve its historic character. D. The property is automatically classified as a museum. Answer. C. Restrictions on alterations to preserve its historic character. Explanation. A preservation easement on a historic property in California typically means that any alterations must comply with guidelines to preserve the property's historic character.